to the boys. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, I fucking... So what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So I haven't posted in a few days. I just really haven't had anything to do. Haven't had much to vlog because I've been hanging out at home trying not to spend any money till I get paid again because right now, like as you guys know, if you're watching my videos regularly, in a little bit of a tight spot right now waiting to start work again. So... Uh, sorry, yeah, sorry for the lack of uploads, but I kind of felt like doing a video today. I'm going to do it kind of like, uh, if you guys watch Maiton Films, he does these types of videos often. He compares, he is a DC4 Integra, the bug eye one or whatever you want to say. So he's compared Type R to the regular ones, blah, 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 blah. So this video, it's probably going to be titled something like DB, DA9 versus DB2 type thing, but it's going to be more of like a general what the difference is between the DA9 and the other Integras of the second generation like kind of going over the what the differences are because a lot of you guys may not know a lot of you guys may just I don't know may want to kind of know I don't know something you might want to find out what the differences are so um, I'm gonna just kind of go over everything and hopefully you guys gain some knowledge out of it it's kind of windy outside so I'm gonna go to this inside and I'm going to uh, I'll just post a bunch of pictures on the screen and kind of just overlay it like that and we'll uh, we'll just get right into it but uh, if you guys do enjoy this video, you want to see more of this type for not maybe not just this car, but something else, I don't know, whatever, uh, be sure to drop a like and let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, let's just jump right into this. So it's going to be DA9 compared to DB2 compared to DA6, 7, or 5, 6, 7, and 8, and uh, kind of what's going on between all of them. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm going to start this off uh, with the exterior stuff. So keep in mind that there's two different types of the second gen Integra, or three different types, I'm sorry. There's the 90 to 91, there's the 1992 to 1993, and then there's the GSR trim. So the GSR, like I said it just now, is a trim model, but the main differences are 90 to 91, 92, 93, because they switch it up over those years. So the GSR is only a 92 to 93 model. They did not have it in the 90 to 91 model. So some main differences on the 91 to 92, for example, are the front bumper. On the front bumper, it's a lot more square. It's a lot more straight down. And then uh, on the 92 to 93 front bumper, it's more curvy. It's got kind of a lip onto it. Both of them, they have factory optional lip kits. They look a little bit different. So if you want to see those, you can Google search some of those. Uh, but yeah, that's the main difference is, is the 9091 front bumper is square and the 9293 is more curved. So then the next external difference is going to be the rear bumper. Um, it's a really subtle difference, so it's hard to tell, but if you look, uh, the picture here on the left is going to be the 9091 rear bumper. If you can tell, it kind of comes straight down and then it has a slight uh, like bump to it and then it kind of just levels out again whereas the 9293 does the same thing but it goes deeper and then it kind of curves more uh, it's really subtle and they hardly change it all but it is a difference so I'll have those left and right on the screen but uh, yeah like I said not much of a difference but it is there considered a facelift if if you want and then the uh, the other difference on the rear end is going to be the tail lights so the 90 to 91 Integra had the quote unquote 50 50 tail lights or the pink stripe tail lights because there's like pink lines in it and then the 92 to 93 Integra had the traditional, um, the white for reverse, red for break, and amber for turn signal, like the three color lenses. So um, if somebody tries to tell you they're JDM tail lights when they're the 5050 lights, no, they're not. They are just the, uh, they're just 9091. Now there is the uh, JDM lights or the, the all clear ones, which obviously, depending on which state you live in, are, are not DOT approved. You have to get the color bulbs and then it, it depends on the copy. Yeah, those weren't optional. Those were like an add-on. But yeah, OEM is 50-50, and, which is red and white, and then the red, white, and amber. All right, so other than those obvious things, um, there's going to be a few more differences that obviously there's going to be deferred between the trim models. There's going to be the RS, which is the absolute base model, the LS, which is the luxury special, and then the GS, which is the Grand Sport or whatever, and then there's the GSR, Grand Sport Racing. So LS, or I'm sorry, RS has nothing, no power, anything. It's all crank, no sunroof. It's as light as possible, so if you want a, the best, easiest track car, that's the one that you want to try and find. Um, and then there's the LS, which is what my model is, which has the power windows and it has the sunroof or moonroof I'm sorry 
but then there's the GS, which has the has all the power options, but it also has power locks, which is a nice thing to have. And then uh, also, I believe the GS and the GSR are the only ones that came with a black leather interior. Um, obviously, there's quite a few different color interiors that our cars came with. Uh, the palmy blue, the blue, the black, the uh, tan, uh, a few others. I think there's like a charcoal gray and whatnot. But yeah, there's plenty of interior colors that our cars had. But yeah, other than those trim differences, those are the other external differences. Then there's OBD-1, which obviously has a little bit more sensors, a little bit easier, because then you'll get the check engine light and all that stuff, and you can read the codes off the check engine light, because that'll flash. And I don't want to get into the details of obd versus OBD-1. If you guys want to know, you can look it up. But yeah, that's the difference between those two is the computer right there, uh, mechanically getting into that. So the 9091 is going to have uh, 130 horsepower B18 A1 and also the 9293 also has the B18 A1 except for along with the facelift they kind of gave it a tune up too. So I believe it had something to do with the cams, the intake manifold, uh, different EC, like some different tune on the ECU but they basically changed those few things and they bumped it up 10 more horsepower for the 9293 as compared to the 9091. And then for the transmission, there's going to be a few differences as well. So um, I'm not entirely sure which chassis is which, but I know between the two, there's going to have uh, a different clutch. One's going to have more splines than the other. I believe the 90 to 91 transmission is going to end in an A1 on the on the stamp, and then the tranny on the 92-93 is going to end in a YS1. But that doesn't mean, because the GSR is also stamped a YS1, so it doesn't mean that it's going to have the short gears that the GSR has but those are the engine codes that they end up in. Um, all right, so the difference now between the GSR and the 92-93 Integra, like I said, the 92-93 base models had uh, the B18A1 engine, 140 horsepower, whereas the B17 and the GSR had, I think it was 160 horsepower, or like 120-ish pounds of torque, and it was a peppy little motor. All right, so now that the engine stuff is done, we'll move on to the interior. The interior, really the only differences between the American models of the 9091, 92, 93 is the 9091 had a three-spoke steering wheel. Uh, kind of ugly in my opinion, but, I mean, that's just me. And then the 9293 had a four-spoke. It was a little bit skinnier looking, a little bit shinier to me. Uh, it just looked a little bit more fresh and with the times at the time. But that's pretty much the main difference between the interiors. Other than that, they all had obviously optional armrests and stuff like that. If you got that at the dealership, they all had the same style seats, same dash, and the cluster. Oh, the cluster, yeah. The cluster on the 9091, I believe, goes up by increments of 500 RPMs instead of 250. And then it redlines at, I want to say, like 8, but that's about it. Uh, but it's mostly just the RPM difference in how thick the lines are and that they're going up by 500 instead of 250. Alright, so the GSR was the American version, and then in Japan they got a little bit different of a version. It's not a DA9, it is chassis code DA6, which is the Japanese GSR, but they called it the XSI. Obviously being Japanese, it's going to be right-hand drive. It's got a few external differences. The Japanese models have thinner side moldings. The GSR one also has VTEC side moldings as well as the XSI. And then it's got it's got the JDM parking pole. It's got the the brake light on the rear bumper. It's gonna have the fender turn signals or side markers. And then it's also gonna have a different engine. The XSI is gonna have a B16 instead of a B17. So it's gonna be the Civic SI engine instead. Uh, obviously another VTEC motor, but rev happy, pretty sick, and pretty highly sought after for up until today like it's still people still want that stuff but interior interior wise they had the power folding mirrors they had a digital climate control and uh, they had a different tachometer it, obviously redlined higher but steering wheel there was an optional momo wheel back in the day um, but other than that it was pretty much the same as the GSR and or the DA9 chassis so just as us Americans, we got the DB1, which was a plain boring model, with the non-VTEC B18A1. The Japanese got a cool model because they get to cool everything. So they got a chassis code DA8, which is the Japanese four-door, but it also had a B16. That was basically the only thing special about it. Obviously, JDM, so thin side moldings, all the external goodies, parking pole, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, that was the main difference was it was a four-door with a B16 in it instead of the B18. So they got a VTEC motor in their four-door, whereas we did not. So lucky them. So all the Japanese models are going to have the JDM one-piece headlights. Uh, pretty highly sought after. I, I think they're sick. I just, 
Only thing I don't like about them is they're plastic, so they break a lot easier, they fade, and they do, they're, they're a lot of maintenance. They're sick, but they're a lot of maintenance. But yeah, they did, they had those. We got them out here, uh, but Stanley made them, just like they make all the OEM lights for the Hondas and stuff. But I don't know if our cars out here actually came factory with those on, or if we had to start yanking those from Japan. But I do know that the Japanese ones at least had one pieces on their models. Okay, so getting into the other chassis now, there's a total of seven Integra chassis for the second generation, that's crazy, but there's uh, there's gonna be the DA5, which is a pretty rare one. It came with a single overhead cam ZC motor. I believe the DA5 was an all-wheel drive model as well. There's very few of them. They were mostly for like Japan, a few in Japan, and like New Zealand places where they really get a lot of snow and whatnot, and they still need a commuter car that can get through the snow and such. And there's going to be the DA7, which is the four-door version of the DA5. So it's still got the ZC single over a cam motor with, I believe, four-wheel drive. Uh, some models, very few, though. And then there's going to be the DA6, which, like I said, is the XSI, the, uh, the VTEC engine two-door in Japan. And then there's going to be the DA9, which is the American version of the two-door with the non-VTEC motor. There's the DB2, which is the American two-door with the VTEC motor. There's the DB1 chassis, which is the American four-door with the non-VTEC motor. And then there's the DA8, which is the Japanese VTEC four-door. So, yeah, seven in total. And all of them, exterior, depending on the year, obviously, all look the same. It's just the engines, really, that matter. So all of those are pretty sick and all. Uh, the DB2, which is the coveted one out here in the States, there's really not a big difference in them. I mean, a lot of people have them nowadays and have them swapped, so they're really not even DB2s anymore because it's not like the Type R chassis of the DC, uh, the DC code because the Type R chassis has like stitch welding, special control arms that make it lighter, five log, blah, 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 whereas the DB2 in the, in the second gen Integra is literally just got the VTEC side moldings and the B17 engine. Suspension and all that was basically the same. I think spring rate might have been a little bit different, but it was all the same pretty much. But it did get a spoiler with the third brake light on it. I think that was the only difference because the other cars got optional uh, rear hatch spoilers or whatever, but I don't think they had the rear brake lights on them. So those are cool. And they also got, obviously depending on the trim and models, they had six spoke steering or six spoke wheels on the DB2 model because race car. All right guys, so that's pretty much it. Uh, anyways, that was a lot of information for me to splurt out at you guys. I hope that you guys thought it was pretty sweet. Um, I think I covered pretty much everything that I could between all the Integras. Um, but anyways, guys, again, I'm sorry for not posting for, shoot, probably four or five days now. But I'm trying to get out there. I just, like I said, haven't had the money to spend to put into the car yet. And then I, I still have a few things to do. I just swapped out axles again. It's still doing its thing, so I need to get a better axle. I need to do tie rods, inner and outer, and alignment, so I'll be doing that here very soon. And then still just trying to save up and hunt down the rest of these K-Series parts. That way we can get this K-Swap started. But I uh, think I might have a few things coming up this week, so I will let you guys know for sure because I'll be making videos on it. I might be getting a GoPro hopefully this week so I can do some more driving videos. So if you guys are down for some driving videos, let me know in the comments below because those are fun to make because uh, I just get to go drive and have fun. But anyways, guys, yeah, if you enjoyed it, like I said, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and uh, I'll see you guys for the next video. Peace out and have a good day.